My life is in your hands. My life is in your hands. You took control when I was young, when I was not able. My life is in your hands. My life is in your hands. You took control when I was young, when I was not able. Hi, welcome to Inspire Blessings with Jimmy Prince, and I want to thank you so much for joining me today. And today is uh, my returning guest, uh, Naomi Piero, who also just song, sung the song of the introduction every week um, to my TV show. So I've been blessed, Naomi. Thank you so much for uh, for doing that, and uh, you've been a blessing. So every week, people hear you about six times a week. <laughs> yeah, that was a long time ago now we did that. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, going into the this is like maybe the sixth year. It was like 2013, if I recall. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's been amazing that God has really, uh, you know, opened this platform for me to be able to, you know, inspire others with love, faith, and hope. And sometimes, uh, you know, the stories are um, testimonies of, of God and, and how he helps people to get through their trials. Now, I was hoping that this uh, interview would have been a bit more different, kind of... Um, because I think this might be maybe the th second or third time that you've been on, on the show as my guest. And uh, one was about, you know, you, you singing the songs, the songs that God blessed me to, uh, to, uh, to write. But also, uh, then you had shared about uh, Tommy, okay, your husband, who uh, God had healed, what, 10, 15 years ago was that? Yeah, uh, about 11 years now, yeah. Okay, okay. So... Nine. So we know that uh, that that Tommy went through another uh, devastating situation, and if you could be able to kind of um, you know be able to share, I mean, this one I, I hate to say ended differently, but it's also I guess how God had helped you to get through it as well. So um, I know that I have a clip of your testimony. Do you mind if I show that? Sure. I always had a relationship with Jesus, but it wasn't until this last year Thank you. 
knocked in our life and bad circumstances. We can bring our pain and our joys to Jesus because he's trustworthy with our hearts. I would not have been able to get through this whole year if it weren't for the love of Jesus. So my message to anyone who is listening is that yes, we may live in a bad and broken world, but we serve a mighty and very good God. That had to be a, um, a tough uh, video to make, you know, because every single time you're doing something like this, it kind of brings up memories. Mm -hmm. I mean, and now, how long has it been since time you passed away? Um, it was January of 2020, so a year and a half, almost two years. Now, if I remember correctly, this was also the time when all of a sudden uh, start, things started to happen in 2020. And uh, where people weren't even able to maybe even see their loved ones in the hospitals, would do were you caught up in that? Well, we were lucky in the sense that everything went down before anybody really knew anything about COVID. People started talking about it, but nothing was shut down. So when he passed away in January, that's the, something we always talk about. We're so grateful for because he was in Manhattan in the hospital, and I live on Long Island. And I was able to travel back and forth, and he needed uh, me and his family to be there all the time to be with him and bring him things and mm -hmm. everything. But we always said if this happened later and we weren't able to be yeah. with him, oh, forget it. it. Was devastating. And we were able to have a huge memorial service with like right. a thousand people. Um, and that was in February. And then I was just trying to like get my life on track, and then everything shut down in March. Yeah, no, thank, thank goodness, because I just hate to think of all the families that have lost their loved ones throughout this and not been able to be there at their bedside. Can't imagine. You know? Um, but, uh, so what was it? What type of cancer did Tommy end up having? It was really so many things. Um, he the, the 12 years ago, 2009 testimony that I had came from blood clots. And so he was always dealing with his leg swelling and things like that. So that added complications. Um, but what they found was um, a form of leukemia in his bone marrow. So we were supposed mm -hmm. to just have to deal with that. But while we were dealing with that, they found a tumor in his lung at the same time. So he was dealing with both things, never smoked in his life, anything normally healthy. Um, so we had to have a whole surgery for that. And then on top of it, though, the reason he was in the hospital for really almost the entire six months was because everything kept counteracting with the, the cancers and the treatment and then his legs swelling. And mm -hmm. then he developed a really bad um, infection, necrotizing fasciitis, in October of 2019. And that kept him in the hospital the rest of the time. They had to cut a huge chunk out of his leg. We almost lost him that night. Mm -hmm. And they weren't sure. All the doctors were coming with ashen faces. We don't know if he's going to make it. We had so many people praying. And we had another testimony. He was fine the next day and he had the huge hole and it was a whole process but he was alive and he came back mm. from that. So that was like right. another reason why I just believed God was going to heal him of the cancers because we had the big testimony in 2009 and then right. from the big infection we had that big testimony too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, like on the one hand you could say thank you God that you healed him the first time so you did have the 10-15 years and so on but I guess you know what we just know that miracles can work one after another you know what I'm saying but sometimes we don't know why things happen as they do yeah it's all in God's hands whatever yeah. what is it Proverbs 3 5 6 trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path you know because I know that uh, you know throughout trials in my life sometimes when I am weak it's only through the power of God that I'm able to stand strong and to be able to put that past, oh yeah, and to go and to go forward, mm -hmm. you know. Definitely. So now, so so we always knew that uh, you love singing. You always sing beautifully at church um, and through the plays as well as service. So uh, so when people say, "Oh, Naomi Piero," they know you, you know, because of the fact that you're well known as a singer there, and it's a very large church. Um, so that's how I knew to ask you what you know where we were talking about this the other day and how um i had approached you at um you know when my children would go to youth group and happen to see you and say to you hey you know 
maybe one day you'll be able to sing, you know, the songs that God blessed me to write and not realizing it really was, you know, a prophecy that came true, you know? Mm-hmm. And uh, so, so yeah, I think you actually uh, sing about four or five of my songs, you know, yeah. two albums. So, yeah, it's, it's, uh, and, and uh, the Christmas one, I'm always like, <laughs> it's like a country beat to it and, and you pulled it off, you know, I wasn't really sure whether or not, uh, you'd be able to do that because you're more into, you know, the soprano type of songs, I guess you could say, you yeah. know? Yeah. But, um, so now how did going through this situation with Tommy, okay, how did God use you to be able to now be a songwriter and, and produce your own songs? It's, it's really exciting um, for me, actually, because I, like you said, I've always loved singing, um, and I like to write poems, but I never knew how to write my own songs, and that was always the thing. People were always like, why don't you make an album? And I'd always say, because I don't write my own songs. I'd have to just sing other people's songs. So, um, actually, the first album that came out last year, My Weapon is a Melody, is because I felt like before Tommy passed, it was the songs that helped me on my drive that like hour and a half drive back and forth to the city every day that God kept me going. And I felt him tell me you're going to make an album using these songs, all the songs that help you get through this. And I thought it was going to be a praise album, like a testimony of Tommy Mm -hmm. being healed. When he passed away, I felt God was telling me you're still going to make this album. And it's just going to have a different purpose. So that album is filled with worship covers of songs that really helped me and things that God was speaking to me. But then at the same time, about two months after Tommy passed, I felt the urging to write a song for the first time. And that was every step. Um, I the, the melody came to my head and the words, one day I was getting out of the shower and I just heard, trust me, don't look down the road. And I just stopped and I said, Lord, is this a song that I'm supposed to write? Because I needed it for myself and I believe he gave it to me for me. And now hopefully it helps other people because I would start to get so scared when I thought down the road Mm. and I thought the future without Tommy, I I met him at 19, married at 21. So I've never been on my own before. So Mm. it was such an impossible task to think about going all these years now figuring out life by myself and and God told me stop thinking about that because you don't have the grace for that yet I'm going to help you one step at a time so I wrote that song and I thought maybe that would be it and then on one of the anniversaries of his passing I felt inspired to write another song called both in his arms about how I was looking at the sky and I was thinking, Tommy and I aren't under the same sky anymore. I don't know, you know, how to feel him. And I just felt God saying, I'm the connection. Mm -hmm. I'm holding on to Tommy and I'm holding on to you. So I wrote that and that just helped me immensely to feel like I was still connected to him in a way. And then as the year went on, every time I just felt inspired by a new thing God was teaching me, I get to the piano and start writing and eventually now since um, March 2020 when I first started writing I now have eight songs of my own that I was able to create a new album and every single song I wrote because I needed it because I needed the truths that God was teaching me through that and to now be able to share it with others is amazing because I my prayer is that it could help other people you know, the same way that it helped me. Right, 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 right. And so um, I believe you sent me that song, uh, a little clip of it, or no? I don't know. The, I don't know if it was one. Take My Hand was one of the newest ones this year. Yeah, I don't think it was this, the one you, you, the first one that you wrote, though, right? Right, no, that was just yeah, uh, Take My I watched, Hand. Right, I watched the other one. So so tell me about the Take, take My Hand. So I felt, I, I have a picture Uh, hung up in my house of Jesus reaching through the water to grab um, your drowning hand. And I always looked at it and it inspired me. I remembered that story of Peter in the Bible when he was walking on the water, when he was focusing on the 
storm and the sea, he would sink. But when he focused on Jesus, he could stand. And when he did fall, Jesus had to reach out his hand and Peter had to decide, I'm going to take his hand and let him save me. And that's how I feel so much of the time that I'm just drowning in grief and sadness because of how much I miss Tommy. And I just feel God telling me, take my hand. So I wrote this song based off that idea, like life can feel like a constant storm. When you finally get your head above the water, another wave comes and crashes. So when you try to live life like that on your own, you are constantly going to be um, tumbling under the water. But if we choose to reach out and touch God's hand, Mm -hmm. He would pull us out from despair. Right. And the video is special because I had a lot of friends involved who are all walking through something. Some people have an answer to a testimony and some are just still walking through it and still mm -hmm. in the storm. So the video just shows different places of people's lives, but how we all have the same thing in common is that we reach out to Jesus for help. Right. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
That's uh, very, uh, you know, heart wrenching, you know. And uh, let me just pause this one second here. Um, yeah. So again, that might be tough to tough to uh, make as well. But I also like the fact that you had that little added touch of putting people through their trials, you know, because it's we all have, we'll have different trials. It's just a matter of how do we get through, you know, through them. Yeah. You know, like you said, exactly. by the I don't think anyone leaves this earth untouched by trials and suffering, no matter what it is. Everyone's going through something, and it all depends how you're going to deal with it. Turn away from God or turn towards him. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and really, by the grace of God. And uh, I don't know how people um, kind of get through life without God, especially I mean, these days. There's so much going on. You know, the world is, is getting crazier, right? Um, and also, you know, people are losing uh, their loved ones left and right. So it's just a matter of um, if you have nothing, you know, because really is that our faith gives us hope. And hope is the things that's not seen, you know. And so thank goodness that we have that hope, that we have that hope that there is a heaven. And that one day we will be, you know, reunited with our loved ones right yeah exactly that's that's the only thing i i feel like that keeps me going I, if i didn't know jesus and if i didn't think i would see tommy again i don't know how i would survive and besides the fact as well of jesus just helping me survive i've also seen just so much of his goodness and how he still brings me so much joy through my friends and family and different mm -hmm. things I'm able to do. It's not just a, I'm crawling to that finish line. Right. Like sometimes it right. feels like that, but sometimes he just wows me with how good he is. Like how I shared in the testimony video, how he would wake me up every day with a different song running through my head. I don't normally have a song running through my head, but in that first month I did, and it was a song to help me get up because he was showing me how much he loved me and just different things that I read through devotionals or, or things that a friend spoke to me. I knew that he was speaking to me and that he cared about me and, and he just does like little things for me like that every day. And I have a sign up in my house that says, keep choosing joy because it very much is a choice. Mm -hmm. And I could decide to just stay in the sadness and depression every day, but I get up every day and decide, no, I'm going to find the things that God has blessed me with and the things that he's given me. And mm -hmm. I feel like thankfulness is one of the biggest ways to get out of that pit of right. despair when you can be thankful for what you do have. And when you can see the things that God's doing, even in the midst of right. tragedy, that's where your life can change. Right. You know, um, I had gone actually the last uh, few years, a couple of years, especially going through this, but is, um, you know, different people um, going go to funerals. And, and you know, I'm not a songwriter either, but uh, again, God, the Holy Spirit inspires you. So after going to maybe the second or third funeral, all of a sudden, you know, I, it always made me wonder, and, and especially knowing that they were believer, I wonder what they're seeing right now, you know? And so this, so, you know, I, I'm hoping one day this will become a song as well. And, uh, and it's called if you believe and let me just share it's it's right now in a card form you know the chorus of it goes like this if you believe death is not over if you believe death is not over your journey has just begun you're seeing the holy one you know so you repeat that and so it so um 
So your journey has just begun. You're seeing the Holy One. It's time for heaven to receive you with joyous sounds of angels singing. They excitingly welcome home God's wonderful and precious child. Angels sm smiling and relatives are waving as Jesus embraces you with his love. Your spirit knows that you are home and no longer scared and alone. New brothers and sisters are so excited as they show you your heavenly home. Streets of gold and sparkling rivers, beautiful fruit trees so vibrant and sweet. Heaven is so amazing and so pure, so majestic and beautiful to see. A wonderful reality that was created for you with no more sorrows as you enjoy eternity. Your spirit is free and your worries release. As Jesus nailed your sins to the cross, Jesus, the King of Kings, the Great I Am, our Father on His heavenly throne, you have overcome the evil one. Adoption guaranteed, your inheritance promised in His Word, faithful and true. You're now part of God's family. So, uh, yeah. So you know. So it's just, it's because I'm thinking. You know, when when uh, I go to f funeral, is that um, you know, I wonder what they're seeing. And so, you know, so it just came out, that came out of it. And uh, I feel like, you know, one day, you know, that again, that'll become a, a song. But, um, yeah, so the thing is, is that uh, I'm glad that God had, um, you know, blessed you with the you know, eight songs. Yeah. Okay. So how would people be able to, you know, be able to, uh, to get it or how does, you know, now you have a little bit different thing. You said it's not so much a CD, it's a USB. If you're gonna yeah. It's really cool. I'm jumping into the 21st century. Okay. Um, people don't have, a lot CD. of people don't have CD players anymore. They're not even putting them in cars. Yeah, believe, believe me, I was so, disappointed. <laughs> yeah, I know. So it's a flash drive, um, but it it's like, it's bigger than just a tiny flash drive. So you can hold on to it and don't lose it. You can put it in your wallet and the flash drive pops out. What I'm um, waiting for right now, it looks like a cassette tape. So it's a throwback to like my era. And then the flash drive pops out. So you can put it into your car's USB, into your computer, into your smart TV. And the true survivor ministries.com well, you know th congratulations on the on the new songs and i'm sure many will be blessed with it and uh and again sorry you know um for the loss of tommy but we all know that one day we will all be together you know one day and, and uh the blessed we'll, we'll see exactly you know what god has a plan for us that we can't even imagine you know Maybe. so so thank you so much and um Thank you so much for joining us today, and I hope uh, you will check out Naomi Pierre's website and, and check out her songs because uh, she does a beautiful job. And uh, if you're looking for somebody to uh, share their testimony, I'd love to share my testimony. As, uh, and also, if you can be able to go to jeanmarieprince.com, and uh, you can on the home page is all my social media sites. Like, you know, uh, follow, subscribe, appreciate it. And keep inspired blessings within arm's reach to help give you comfort when others are at a loss for words. Thank you and God bless. To accept and receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, please say this prayer. I know that I am a sinner who needs forgiveness. Jesus, please forgive me for all my sins and purify me. I know that you died and rose again to pay for my sins. I need you to be my Lord and Savior for the rest of my life. Thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. For more information about Jean Marie Prince and Inspire Blessings, please go to jeanmarieprince.com. That's J E A N M A R I E P R I N C E. Thank you so much and God bless. My life is in your hands. My life is in your hands. You took control when I was young. When I